And hello there, I'm Martin. And you know what? We have a special guest online here, and I'm just going to make sure we're on there. Uh, uh, Brian, are you there? I'm here. Good morning, Martin. Good morning, Grand Forks. Good morning. And if you don't know who Brian is, Brian is the mayor of Grand Forks, and we have an update uh, for you this morning. How, how, what do you have for us today, Brian? Well, I'd like to begin with a, a reminder of some of the closed areas of the city uh, so that the park and open spaces, the playgrounds and the tennis courts and the skate park are closed. Green spaces are still open, but we're monitoring compliance in those areas. Uh, the municipal campground is closed. Public washrooms are closed, but we have those portable toilets I talked about last week that are at City Park and Gyro Park. So city is also closed. Uh, the counter service is available uh, by uh, telephone and by email. So the drop box is there for people who have to make payments. Uh, staff are working remotely as much as possible, but we're also staggering shifts and, and doing a variety of things that give us the potential to withstand uh, the onslaught of the, the virus if it hits the city. Yes, that's something that uh, we're keeping up with, and that's one thing uh, people have been saying. They appreciate uh, Juice FM for uh, only providing real news. <laughs> We've been having that from all our listeners from uh, on all our sister stations across Canada. We have 35 stations that uh, uh, work under one umbrella that uh, all work from the same newsroom uh, for the international news, and we uh, make 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 a point of that. Um, what, what's your What's your thoughts on uh, on on the, the on rumor mills? I'd like to ask you that. Mm, yeah, I think that, you know, to some extent we have to uh, respond to some of these things because they, they catch fire and people start believing them. Um, there's a lot of pressure building on people. Rent is due today. Uh, people are concerned about our long-term care homes and seniors. I can assure you there are uh, strict controls being put into those areas by Interior Health. I've been asked whether or not we should consider a curfew. And, and a very disturbing thing at this point is the shelter is closing today. So today will be the last day of operation of the shelter. I understand that Boundary Family Services uh, is putting a plan in place for the people that are leaving the shelter. I don't have the detail of those things, but those are the kinds of things that need to be addressed or we end up with a lot of rumors. Yes, that's that's one thing I find very interesting is that uh, you know it's 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 it, there are people that are out there working hard behind the scenes and so they can't always get out to 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 make the comments of what what's going on there because there are protocols to follow and uh, it's really appreciated that you're taking the uh, proactive step to uh, come online here and uh, and uh, and and talk with us. Are there any other people that uh, you'd recommend me to get in contact with? Maybe can can I ask that question? Would that be a safe one to well, ask? Well, I think that we're we're going to hear more in the next little while from Roly Russell from the regional district. Uh, the state of emergency that's in place like right now uh, is basically a regional move to uh, respond to the public health crisis. Chris Marsh from the uh, Emergency Operations Center. Diane Langman is the uh, um, uh, chair of the regional district at this point. Uh, so those are the kinds of voices that I hope we can bring on the radio here in the, in the next short period of time. Yes, that's important, and I have been announcing that for any of those people that were you, you mentioned that two five zero four four two 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 four three can is the number to call. If I don't answer, they can always leave a message, and I can get that onto air, even if it's just a short, uh, brief message to introduce, so we know who the who the people are that are looking out for us. What else could you have to say about what's happening in the, in, in Grand Forks? Well, I I think we need to assume the virus is amongst us, um, and we know that there have been some reported cases in the region, so. We can't back off, even though we're seeing a bit of a flattening of this curve. This is not the time to back off on the distancing. So thank you to all the healthcare workers and all the essential service workers that are out there um, that are uh, putting themselves in risk to keep us safe. But in fact, uh, you know, my biggest message here is do not back off on social distancing. And um, Basically, at this point, rather than shaming people, let's see uh, everyone set a good example out there for for how we should be social distancing. Yes, that's one thing I noticed. One thing uh, a friend of mine uh, who lives in, in in Manitoba was saying that he he, he has uh, he, he's missing a lung. He had cancer. He has uh, other uh, uh, compromised uh, a compromised immune system. He has to wear a mask. And he was at shopping, and someone just accosted him over you know 
him being out uh, with the disease and things like that, which is really unfair. And so people should be uh, understand that there are uh, situations that they don't understand, and, and it would be important for them to do something a little more... Uh, uh, you know, to be a little more, you know, a little kinder <laughs> and a little more understanding in that way. Well, and, and, you know, people being accosted because they have too big a buggy load of stuff at a grocery store when, in fact, they might be shopping. They might be shopping for three or four other people. That's true, too. That's one thing we have to uh, to consider. I know that uh, there's a lot of people that are coming back uh, from their, uh, the, the snowbirds are returning and, you know, people have to make sure that they, they understand how serious we're taking it. And they also have to know that we're more than happy to get out there and help them. I, I've heard that there are people that are escorting people from the border, actually, and getting them to, you know, stop and you know, pick up groceries for them and then follow them to where they go and, and just drop the bags off there for them. So there's lots of uh, great things going on out there. A lot of great people that are doing great things. People are reaching out to one another and that is really heartening. It is. And I'm really, I'm really appreciative of that. So um, we're going to continue on. When can I talk to you next? Because we're going to have to get going now. I'm, I'm planning Friday would be the next uh, uh, point where we could connect with the community. And I'm hoping to have other voices out there responding uh, directly to the community. That's, that's great. I, hopefully they will uh, uh, be listening to this and they will call in. So again, the number is 250-442-2243. And how do we contact uh, City Hall if, we wanted, if, 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 you, if there's anyone who wants to get in contact with you? The numbers that are listed for City Hall are still active. So you can call the regular City Hall uh, numbers uh, and we are responding. Okay, great. That's good to know. Thanks so much, Mayor Taylor. It's uh, great to have you, you on the show. Thank you, Martin. Okay, bye-bye.